I'm Steve from This Week With Cars and today I'm back with Barn Sprite number four. Last time we left off the engine is running but it's running only on the fuel bottle and the clutch works. The brakes do not work because we have a big brake leak in the rear. So it's time to get back on this car and see if we can get it drivable. This car needs a new fuel pump in order to run but the reason I didn't just throw a fuel pump on is because there is a gasket missing here between the body and the filler neck on the fuel tank. Here's what the gasket looks like. But in order to get this in, I'm gonna to have to drop the gas tank completely out of the car. So before I work on any of the rest of the fuel system, I'm gonna get this dropped and get this gasket put in. Removing the fuel tank is pretty easy. There's a fuel line right here that needs to be taken loose. And then there's six bolts along the flange of the fuel tank. And then you can drop it out through the trunk floor. That filler neck will just come through a hole that's above this fuel tank right now. So just give me a second and I'll have this out. The fuel tank is out. And there is one wire that goes to the fuel sender. The only way to get to this wire is to take the tank off. So be careful when you're dropping the tank that that is still going to be connected. Now I can squeeze this grommet in. Now when you put the gas tank back in, the filler neck will come up through this grommet, leaving the boot of the car nice and sealed up. While I have the tank out, I might as well take the fuel sender out, check it out and make sure it's working properly. It's just a few flat headed screws to take out and then that will come out of the tank. Wow, this is, the center looks surprisingly nice, especially considering what the outside of it looked like, but there's a good chance that this is still working. Obviously the float is in good shape, it's not rusted. Let's check this and the fuel gauge real quick and see if both of them work. I've ran two wires back to the back. This red one is hooked into the wire that was connected to the fuel sender. And this black one I have connected to ground on the car. I'm just gonna leave these setting right here, not connected to each other. Now I'll turn the key on. You can see my ignition is on now. The ignition light is on and the fuel gauge has gone over full. So I'll take my two leads. I'll take my black one and connect that to the casing of the fuel sender. Then I'll connect the red one where the wire on the fuel center connected before. Now if I raise and lower the float, the gauge should change accordingly. It may not be completely accurate right now. The length of the wires that I'm using is going to add a little bit of resistance there. But as you can see, it's working pretty well. So I don't see any problems with the system here at all. I'll just get this fuel center put back in. With the fuel tank bolted back up, you can see the filler nut coming through the new grommet on the back. The cap just sits on the top of that. After I stuck the filler neck through the grommet, I put the cap on and that held the gas tank up and kept this filler neck from going back down through the grommet until I had, to, had the tank bolted back up. Now I need to remove the old fuel pump, which is located underneath the carbs way down here. There's no good way to film me doing this, so I'll get my hands in there and I'll get this out. Here's the old fuel pump. This right here on the side is a manual lever. So you pull this up and down to manually pump the fuel pump. You can use that to prime your carbs before you start your car. Let's take it over to the bench and test and see if this works or not. I have the pump cleaned up with the solvent. I have the intake right here. I'm gonna put that into the solvent and I'll pump it. And you can see the pump does work. Once I have everything hooked up, I may still have to put a hose on here and use a vacuum to pump the fuel up into the fuel pump to get it started. But I'll find out once I get it installed. Okay, I have the fuel pump installed again. This is the output from the fuel pump. And if it's working, well, you should see fuel coming out of here. So I'm gonna crank the engine over. We'll see if it primes itself and gets the fuel flowing. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to take a vacuum and suck it through the pump and up to here and then the fuel pump should be able to take it from there. Doesn't look like the fuel pump is able to prime itself. 
So I'm gonna hook a vacuum up and suck fuel up through here. Here's the hose to my vacuum. I'm gonna turn that on and suck fuel up. There we go. Fuel's flowing now. I'll give it a couple pumps manually, make sure that the pump is working. There we go, we can see it's pumping. Now I'll just get a new hose to connect from here up to the carburetors. Now I'll start the car, let it run for a little bit and see if the pump keeps up. You can see the fuel pump's leaking. So the gasket that holds it together is no good. You can also see that the pump was working because this carburetor is leaking fuel out of it, so we know fuel was coming up here. But I think I'll just take that fuel pump off and put a new one on there so we don't have any more problems with it. Here's the new pump next to the old pump. These new ones do look like old ones except that they don't come with the priming lever. That's a nice feature and one argument to keep rebuilding your old one and keep it running, but you need to weigh how much time are you going to waste always rebuilding and messing with the old 60 year old unit rather than just replacing it with a brand new one. So I'll just put this one in and we can move on. I have the new pump installed, let's try this again. Sounds like the fuel's made on and up to the engine now. The fuel pump's not leaking. I think I'll move back on to fixing the brakes now. If you remember from the last video, I blew the brake line up here, this one right here. You can see it's all wet right there still. So I'll pull this off and we need to make a new line here. On the inside end of this line, it connects to this T intersection here on the rear end. This is the line that we need to remove. It looks like someone has replaced this before because the fitting should be, look like this. It should take a 7 16 wrench. This is obviously a smaller fitting, so someone has replaced this line before. The other end of the line connects to a banjo fitting at the wheel cylinder. So I'm going to remove that bolt on the banjo fitting. That way I can pull it out and then take the line off of the banjo fitting from outside of the car. So what you're looking at here is the original line which broke in half right here. This is where it was leaking. I have cut the line right here to get the fittings off of the ends. I'm going to reuse the fitting. So I did cut a little piece off of each end to get the fitting off. And then this is the banjo bolt that the fitting went into at the wheel cylinder. So I've already bent a new tube, roughly the shape of what the old one looked like. And I'll bend it exactly to fit once I get it in the car. But I wanted to get the length right and get the shape about right now I'll put my fittings on and take it over to the car. This is the tool that I prefer to use to make my flares. It is hydraulic, so it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to use. Obviously, everybody's tool is going to be different, so I won't cover how this one works. Just remember that before you put your second flare on, that you must put the fittings onto the pipe. Otherwise, there will be no way for you to get them on there. The new brake line is done. Now I can put it in the car. I have the new line installed. Now I just need to add brake fluid bleed it and see if I have any more leaks. I started to bleed the brakes and I heard some air popping up over here. So I need to tighten up these connections at this T connector here on the brakes. Hopefully tightening them will stop this leak. Brakes are bled and the fluid is topped off. Feels like the brakes work. There's one last thing I want to do right now and that's fill the radiator with water. We'll see if the system's leaking or if it holds water and it seems okay. I have the radiator full of water right now. You can see the level right there. Doesn't seem to be leaking from anywhere, so I think the system is good enough for now. I'll put the cap back on. We're ready for some test drives.
that's it for today. We got Barn Sprite number four drivable. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.